Hey guys, welcome back to my YouTube channel. So today I am doing a video on ways that I'm preparing my body for labor. I'm currently almost 37 weeks. I'll be 37 weeks tomorrow by the time you guys see this. And these are some things I'm implementing now, some things I will start a little bit later. Don't take this as medical advice. This is just simply what I'm doing. I have never had a baby before, so I don't know if these things will actually work or not. These are just tips that I've gotten from my midwives or from other mums as well. So I thought I would share with you guys what I'm doing to prepare my body for labour because I know labour is going to be an intense experience but a very amazing, powerful experience. So I'm just going to get straight into the video and share with you my tips on how I'm preparing my body for labour. The first thing that I'm doing is using essential oils and as you guys know I love my essential oils. But one that we actually got given um, is the Clary Sage essential oil and this is something that I'm going to be just putting in my diffuser and I'm going to try and do that once or twice a day probably from like 38 weeks. It stops the production of uh, adrenaline and therefore produces more oxytocin which is what you need for con for contractions to start and for labor to get going. Another essential oil that I'm using is lavender oil and that I'm just going to try and put in my bath and that is because lavender essential oil actually creates elasticity in the skin and that's something that you would want down there especially when a human is coming out. You want your skin to be very stretchy and elastic like. The next thing is food and you need food to fuel your body. Basically if you're going on a marathon or if you are training for a big event you want to prepare your body for that event and labor is definitely not an easy thing to go through. Your body goes through a lot of stress. You're extremely hormonal. You go through quite a lot of pain. So this is something that you need to prepare your body for, not just kind of go into it thinking, oh, whatever happens, happens. So you need the right food to fuel your body. And I cannot stress that eating the right food will definitely prepare yourself for labor and not eating inflammatory foods. Um, this is one thing that I've already started and eating a lot of foods that reduce um, inflammation such as um, turmeric. I've been using a lot of turmeric in pretty much all my foods, um, a lot of greens and also rosehip tea. Rosehip tea or rosehip essentially has um, a lot of anti-inflammatory qualities to it. That is something that I'm trying to do so pretty much every day I'm having rosehip tea but there's also a lot of other things that you guys can look up that um, will help reduce inflammation but also do your research on what causes inflammation. Things such as like red meats or just any type of meat, dairy, eggs, excess sugar, things like that, um, a lot of bleached foods, so like bleached flour, um, bleached sugar, things like that can cause a lot of inflammation. So just make sure you're doing your research on um, what foods do cause inflammation and things that help um, and have anti-inflammatory qualities to it. The next thing is um, my birthing ball or just my exercise ball. Can't really bring it in the frame right now, but I actually only just started yesterday because I got given this ball. I haven't been obviously wanting to go to the shops to get one myself. So we got given this ball by a friend and I'm just starting to do uh, movements on the ball every single day. There is lots of videos on YouTube um, that explain the type of movements that you can do to just kind of open up your pelvis and help baby's head engage in the right position. This isn't something that's going to necessarily induce your labor, but it will help kind of just open everything up. Anytime, any chance that I get pretty much I'm bouncing on the ball or I'm doing like my figure eight movements or like cat and cow poses but there's lots of things that you can research for yourself and you can use the ball for so that is something that's very helpful and I'm already starting to implement on a daily basis. The next thing I'm sure you've heard before but this is raspberry leaf tea and I just got the Planet Organic raspberry, uh, it's red raspberry leaf um, herbal tea and this essentially it doesn't put you put you into labor but it just kind of helps ripen the cervix and get it ready for the intensity that it's going to go through it is quite expensive depending where you get it from um, I got this from Amazon and I'm pretty sure it was a lot cheaper than getting it from the shops I don't mind the taste I actually quite like the taste some people say that they don't like it so 
I don't know, it's just personal preference, I guess. But this is one thing that I have just started to do again. I did start at 35 weeks, but it started to give me a lot of Braxtex contractions. And that was when I had kind of like my false labor scare. So that is one thing I stopped, but I have started again and I haven't really had anything happen or go wrong so i'm just having one to two of these a day yeah i'm not exactly sure if it does 100 percent work but it's just something that everyone recommends including my midwives the next thing is i'm just educating myself on the phases of labor and all the risks involved and that's not something that i'm focusing on the risks but you do need to be prepared so carl and i did go to two parenting classes which basically was just at the hospital that we're going to and they took us through all the stages of labor and things like that but do the research for yourself. Make sure you're watching educational videos because you do want to go into labor feeling prepared and not kind of having no idea what's going on or the risks involved in labor. So educate yourself on epidurals, not having epidurals, educate yourself on all the options that you have, all the alternatives that you have um, when it comes to different situations that you might be put in. That way you're feeling prepared and then if anything does go wrong, not saying that it will, that way you just know all your options and you're not feeling scared or unprepared pretty much. The next thing is focusing on a positive and a successful birth. A lot of people, surprisingly when I start talking about birth they're like oh get ready for the pain or like things might not go to plan blah 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 but that is not something that you want to focus on especially going into such an intense environment just like a marathon as I was saying before or any event that you prepare yourself for you want to be in a good mindset and you don't want to be listening to people that are saying things could go wrong or things might go wrong or focusing on the negatives so one thing that I really recommend is just focus on the positives look up some positive birth vlogs or stories or anything like that and just get good people around you if you can at this time get good people around you who are gonna give you positive affirmations and kind of build you up in this time because that is something that us women really 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 need kind of just affirm yourself that you're gonna have a good labor a positive labor and a successful labor another thing is to stay hydrated you want to be hydrated you want your cervix to be ripe and ready for labor staying hydrated is super super important um, so I definitely recommend drinking as much water as you can one thing that Carl and I have started doing is drinking um, just a bottle or a glass of water as soon as we wake up before we have breakfast or before we pretty much do anything now we've started drinking water while we're doing our devotions and then having breakfast afterwards try and implement water in any way that you can one way that I actually that actually works for me is if I have like a bottle with a straw that's attached to it it's in the kitchen at the moment and I can't be bothered going and getting it but I'm sure you guys know what I'm talking about. Um, it's like a two liter bottle and it has like a little like flip up straw. And that just seems to help me drink water. So that way taking off a lid or sipping it from a glass, like, I don't know. I'm super lazy like that. So <laughs> a straw tends to help. And if you're exactly the same, I definitely recommend getting one if you can. And my final and last thing is to practice meditation. And this is something that I actually really struggle with, um, but I'm trying to do better because it's really, really important for your body to be hydrated, especially during labor when you're going through such an intense experience. And this is something that I've done basically since I was like 13 years old. So I do know a lot of um, breathing techniques and meditation techniques that you can do but there's so many online that you guys can research for yourself if you don't know any but these really really help especially in labor um, if things are getting very stressful or if your body is in a lot of pain meditation can really really help and also just to control your breathing because when you're in a lot of pain we tend to hyperventilate or just kind of hold our breath or things like that so breathing through things and meditating can really really help reduce stress reduce pain actually and it helps it just helps you focus on other things rather than all the stress and pain that your body's going through at the time so definitely definitely practice meditation before you go into labor but that's all I have for you guys today if you have any suggestions of things that I can do I know um, there's also evening primrose oil I think I might try that as well you can I'm pretty sure you can take it internally or you can insert it <laughs> in the last few weeks which kind of helps just loosen and 
moisturize your cervix and get it ready for labor. So that is one thing that I might implement as well. But if you have any suggestions, please let me know in the comments below. I've never had a child before, so I have no idea what works and what doesn't. But if something worked for you, I would love to know. So pop it in the comments below for me because that would be amazing. Not just for me, but for other mums and expecting mums that are watching this video as well. Yeah, I hope you're all doing well in quarantine and in isolation if you're in isolation or quarantine. Pretty hectic time, but I mean, we can make the most of it, right? But I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you did, don't forget to give this video a big thumbs up, comment down below, and subscribe to my channel, and I'll see you guys next time. Bye!